Business Planning for SAP. Managing SAP deployments using Enterprise Architecture. The following presentation is an examination of the challenges that people are exposed to in trying to deploy and maintain SAP installations. We'll cover a brief introduction to some of those challenges to provide the context and the background for the purposes of this demonstration. We'll then go in and take a look at some of the key components that are pertinent in building a SAP architecture and the way that those will help us to understand the deployment of the SAP installations and how to improve those SAP installations in there. We'll proceed then to deliver a demonstration of those key components and how they are integrated with one another. And then finally, we'll wrap up with a summary of and uh, conclusion of what uh, has been presented and demonstrated today. Here are some key considerations and challenges when looking at the deployment and maintenance of SAP installations. Whilst uh, a SAP installation is going to be an IT project, it has in invariably got to satisfy the needs of the business. And uh, it is often the case that there are huge investments in ERP, and these are wasted because the needs of the business have not been fully understood. It is also often the case uh, that there is siloed SAP deployments, and these create redundancy, duplication, and strains uh, between the resources uh, that are having to maintain those SAP systems. And this can occur through rapid expansion or duplication by virtue of mergers and acquisitions. Without having an architectural context, SAP developers will make architectural decisions without considering the strategic needs of the organization. And this is invariably going to happen if there is no strategic direction and uh, motivation that is going to be understood by all of the parties concerned. It is also difficult to, uh, in managing business change and transformation of SAP deployments that result in uh, project uh, failures. And also, it is often the case that SAP resources do not keep up with the shifting business priorities, i.e. the business wants to move rapidly into a particular direction, but there is a certain degree of latency uh, because the SAP resources that are available don't necessarily have a complete and full handle on what they have got installed in order to be able to adapt it to meet the needs of uh, the, the business as it evolves. So the bottom line is, to address and prepare for the enterprise-wide impact ERP deployment and maintenance, SAP customers need to fully embrace business architecture and planning techniques, tools and strategies. There are a number of scenarios that we can usefully deploy to help us to understand the value of having an enterprise architecture when looking at a SAP and uh, uh, ERP uh, deployment system. Now, we know that uh, SAP systems and their deployment, they cut through the heart of an organization and they touch upon the business strategy, the business processes, the organization, services, applications, IT infrastructure, information and data. So having a holistic view of where the SAP systems sit and support each one of these areas and deliver uh, the key capabilities which the business requires. So having a handle of that helps us to understand and be able to answer questions. Consolidation planning starts looking at what have we got today what uh, do we need to use and uh, what is it that is being overlapped and therefore can we identify any reuse and can we remove uh, the duplication in there. Scenario three considers looking at developing strategic SAP applications. And it's often the case that uh, SAP architectural decisions are by default outsourced to the SAP developers. And uh, what this means is that uh, it reduces uh, the number of decisions that need to be made and therefore speeding up the implementation. However, it also does create silo developments of SAP uh, resources. Whereas really for a complete SAP system, what we should really be doing is looking at the consideration of the common implementation strategy. And finally, scenario four looks at maintaining uh, the, the impact of our SAP systems and any proposals that we would make to change the SAP systems and how they will impact the business in there. Key components in building a SAP architecture. In this section, we're going to take a look at some of the key components that we need to understand. It's the SAP 
strategy and the business uh, strategy that has been adopted by the organization that drives the, the direction in which the business is moving. And it is the instantiation of uh, that by virtue of the processes, the systems, the people, um, the technologies to support that, which is implemented to help the business to deliver to the strategic intent of the organization. And it is uh, the provision of the business services that are implemented by those SAP processes using the SAP data running on the applications and the hardware that supports to satisfy to the needs of the business. So based on those key components, in our demonstration, we will show you how we can import some SAP Blueprint projects from SAP Solution Manager and create business process flow models and business process hierarchy models from that. We will then proceed to look at how we can bring in SAP data and SAP applications from a SAP ERP system. And then what we'll do is we will correlate all of the SAP data items, i.e. the applications, the data, and the business processes into a centralized repository so that we can then go in and, and uh, perform explorer uh, views and uh, undertake impact analyses on that and then start looking at how we can use that to make uh, or propose change uh, to, to the SAP systems in there. In the first part of our demonstration, we are going to import a SAP project from a SAP Solution Manager installation. Having created a blank encyclopedia, let's go in and import the project. With the credentials that we have just provided, we will be returned with a collection of projects that we can select an individual project from to import into our encyclopedia. In our example, we're interested in the banking project, and that's what we're going to import. So what this will do is import into our encyclopedia a single SAP project, which is going to have a number of scenarios, processes, and process steps associated with it. And for each one of those process steps, there will be associated with that some SAP transactions and uh, SAP components. Now that the import is complete, let's take a look at the project that has been brought in. And if we look at the definitions, we'll go in and find that there is a SOP project that's been added in. And our banking project is present here. If we take a look at the decomposition of this, we can see in here that this is brought in a number of scenarios. And each one of those scenarios is breaking down into the processes. And each one of the processes breaks down into the individual process steps. And this represents the SAP solution and business process hierarchy uh, that is uh, visible when we take a look in directly at SAP uh, Solman. Now, whilst the hierarchy is brought in as a set of definitions, the models or the uh, diagrammatic representations of those aren't automatically created. So we have to go in and create a view which represents that hierarchy. And in this example, I have uh, pre-populated the banking hierarchy to show uh, the SAP solution project that we've just imported in. So as we can see in here, we're now representing the process hierarchy, beginning with the project that we brought in here, and then that breaking down into the scenarios. So we have some properties against uh, the scenario in here. And what we brought in is the SAP name and the SAP IDs. Yeah. And each one of those um, scenarios is breaking down into the SAP processes, etc., which are represented here. So this will represent a SAP process of that stereotype, etc. For the purposes of our demonstration, I'm interested in investigating the consumer loan process. And uh, in order to be able to investigate that, let's go and take a look at uh, some of the steps and processes that are performed with that particular process. So by looking in the browser, let's navigate our way through over to the consumer loan process. So I found that here, and by decomposing it, I can see that it's got a number of uh, steps associated with it. 
and in particular I'm interested in the trigger payment uh, step. Notice that the trigger payment step has associated with it a SAP transaction and the one I'm interested in again is the parameters for payment of a P request. Now notice again that that uh, has associated with it a SAP transaction code and in this instance the SAP transaction code is F111. So let's make a mental note of that particular SAP transaction code and we're now going to go over and take a look at the SAP ERP system and to identify that SAP transaction code and to associate and find out the applications and the data that this particular SAP transaction code is associated with. Now given that we're interested in the application components and the data which are associated with a particular SAP transaction code that we have found uh, in our business process import, so the SAP ERP browser gives us an opportunity to be able to look at some SAP systems and uh, look at those SAP systems from a data point of view. And in this example, we already have a SAP ERP system uh, that contains the uh, application components and the data that we're particularly interested in. But this contains an awful lot of information, and to work with it effectively, we need to be able to go in and to find either uh, items by navigating through the tree structure or by searching uh, for particular items of interest. And in our example, what we're going to do is we're going to search in our hierarchy for the SAP transaction, which we have identified, which is F11. And when we do a search for this, it brings back one item that is found in the hierarchy in there, which is parameters for payment of P request. And if we want to look at the context in which that particular SAP transaction sits, we can do so as here. So now it's telling us that this particular SAP transaction is part of the uh, module pool for entering payment runs, which is a program. And that program is part of a development class, which is part of the automatic payment application component. So there's a number of things we're going to do. So the first thing here is because we're interested in the SAP transaction code here, we're interested in understanding what uh, data items that that forms part of or is used as part of or p possibly used as part of because we know it's part of the module pool here for this uh, particular program and uh, against that program there are a number of um, data entities and um, SAP transactions which are being utilized. So to export out the collection of data which is associated with this particular program, we're going to create a um, subject area. And we do this by creating a subject area here. And then dragging the program here that we've just identified. And that will bring into the subject area the collection of uh, data items that are uh, or the tables which are associated with that particular program. So now we have this subject area. Now this is a subject area that's created in the SAP ERP system. We can export that out over into System Architect. So let's select that. Click on Next and we're going to create a diagram over there and it's going to be called F11 and I already happen to know that it's going to be part of the SAP uh, model, uh, model diagrams. So let's click on to next and export that out. So far we have identified then the business processes that uh, we're particularly interested in. So that was the consumer loan process and associated with that down its hierarchy was the F11 um, SAP transaction code and against that SAP transaction code we've been able to identify the entities that we're interested in. Now to complete the picture we're also going to use the SAP ERP browser here also to identify uh, the application components which are associated with the SAP transaction code and we'll be able to export that out over into System Architect as well. So that will give us a view of the application components, a view of the processes, and a view of the data uh, that those processes use. So we'll have a unique combination of the 
of the three uh, views all hold all being held uh, within system architects so as we can see now it's constructed a diagram for us uh, based on the export of that subjects area from within the SAP ERP system that we were just looking at so here are the sets of entities that we brought in and their relationships and against each one of these entities we also have the various attributes that have been brought in let's just go back over into the SAP ERP system and also uh, take a look at the uh, exports that we want to uh, conclude for the application components as well so remember what we were saying here is that the application components or rather the transactions that we've got are part of these programs which form part of the um, uh, development class which is part of the automatic payments application component so we can export this out too as, as, as an SA uh, XML file and again what I will do here is it's called automatic payments and let's save that okay so now that we've uh, completed with the SAP ERP uh, system that uh, uh, we've been using here let's go back over into system architects and uh, import the information that we've just exported out as far as the application components are concerned and if we do this and update sync fields when data is applied so what that provided for us then is the set of application components uh, which was the automatic payment there we have it and if we take a look at the details for that the list of SAP transactions that have been associated with that and if you look at the one that we were uh, originally looking at it was F111 111 but also against this uh, application component there are a number of other SAP transaction codes and SAP transactions which this uh, uh, which this performs having imported the entities from the SAP ERP system um, we have brought in the models as entity relationship diagrams however um, whilst the models have been organized uh, via the SAP transaction codes into subject areas we want to just uh, elaborate on that just a little bit further and associate each one of the individual entities that we've got here and associate it with the SAP transaction code and the reason we're doing it uh, in this manner is that there may actually be more than one uh, SAP transaction code associated with the entity and in this example no there aren't any other existing SAP transaction codes so let's just go in OK and we can repeat the same exercise for the other entities that are uh, that are present on this particular diagram and I say the reason that we want to do this is then we're able to go and uh, explicitly navigate uh, through the SAP transaction code when we're exploring the relationships between the various model items that we've got so now we are at a stage where we have got a set of uh, process models that we brought in from our SAP solution uh, manager integration a set of application components and a set of data models that we brought in from our SAP ERP system and the unifying component for all of these is the SAP transaction code so if we now have a model and the unification element of the SAP transaction code we can use that as a way of being able to investigate the relationships and the dependencies between all three parts of the models in there and we can do this by creating an explorer diagram and I'm going to use the TOGAF 9 viewpoint here for a SAP business footprint diagram because I've already predefined and set up some uh, Explorer object reports and relationship reports in our heat map manager so 
I'm interested in the first instance in identifying uh, application components uh, that are associated with the processes via the SAP transactions. So this has added on to the diagram for us a couple of uh, application components and you can see on here our automatic payments application component is already in there. So let's now resize the diagrams and move this out of the way for us. Now similarly I'm also interested in understanding uh, the processes which are associated with those application components. And if we now move that over here, and if we zoom in a little bit, and again, you'll see in here is the entry for our trigger payment process that we had also uh, started off with when we were looking at that, the relationship uh, between that and our F111 SAP transaction code. Now, I'm also interested in understanding the entities that are associated here. So we can run this report for the processes uh, to the entities via SAP transaction codes. We could have also looked at application to uh, entities uh, or application component to uh, entities via the SAP transaction code is here, but this will give us a smaller subset in which we're interested in. So this has a large number of entities at the moment, so that's why it's taking a little while. So here we have now a number of entities that have been added into the models. And so now, if we want to start exploring the relationships between those and exposing those, we're able to do so. So if I want to understand the relationships between the application components and the processes, we're able to run the uh, application to process via SAP transaction report. So immediately you can see on here that the application component that we had originally, uh, which is our automatics payment, is indeed associated with the trigger payment uh, process that we had identified. And in addition to that, as part of the models, we've also brought in loans and uh, the associated processes with that application component as well. Remember, all via the SAP transaction code. Now similarly, we can also now start taking a look at the relationships between the processes and the entities and the applications and the entities. So if we run the application component or process to entity via the SAP transaction code report, we'll get a large number of relationships being shown on here. So again, our trigger payment has got a large number of entities, uh, or that particular process step has got a large number of entities associated with it, similarly with the, the other uh, processes that we've got here. So you can see very quickly uh, that we're able to import in information from multiple uh, data sources and combine those into a central model for us to use. And this gives us the great advantage that we're able to harvest this information and leverage that very, very quickly into our, um, into our models in here and be able to understand uh, currently what we've got and also to be able to work out where we want to go in the future if we're proposing on making any changes to any part of the models that we've got here or any part of your SAP uh, installation. And you can approach that either from by looking at the process side or the data side or uh, the application component side. So by understanding the strategy, the process that we've imported in from SAP Solman and the data and applications that we've uh, brought in from SAP ERP systems, we're able to have an integrated view of the dependencies between those various components and use those as the basis for performing business uh, analytics and impact analyses before we go ahead and uh, start uh, developing um, roadmaps for transformation and change of any SAP installations that we have. And the key code to all of this is the SAP transaction code that sits at the heart of all of these three key areas.